Uh, hello, everyone. What is up? Welcome to the Autoblog live stream. It's the official live stream of Autoblog.com. My name is Eric. I am the multimedia producer here. And joining me is Autoblog news editor. I always for I always forget, but I feel like I always get it right. Is it news editor? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I gotta see. I gotta be more confident in myself. I don't think I've ever gotten it wrong. But it's a uh, autoblog news editor Joel Stocksdale is joining me on his day off. So I really, I really appreciate it, Joel. That's a uh, that's a very nice of you. You did not have to do this, but I I appreciate the company. Well, I said I would, so didn't want to didn't want to like back out at the last. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind it. It's your day off. It's your day off. If you if you wanna if you got something else you wanna do if you wanna peace out early, that's fine too. Uh, no, no worries at all, but much, well, much appreciated. Go. So, uh, I'll see you later, <laughs> <fun. laughs> well, well, in that case, I'm out of here. <laughs> mm. I was talk. we were talking before we started here. Oh, w actually, before I go into this story, do you happen to remember <laughs> who, what was the move last time? Did I invite you or did you invite me? Which one seemed to work better? You know, I think we actually did have success both ways. Okay, okay. It may, yeah. Um, I can shoot. I can shoot you an invite then, if that's cool with you. Yep. Right. EA friends, and so you are a uh, Street Rat ninety nine, right? Yes. Cool. EA friends. Yes. They play games. <laughs> play the games. Did that actually go through? I don't know uh, if it did. Nothing happened on my end. I do not have an invite yet. Ah, player options. Oh, uh-oh. I don't like this. It's not, um, it's not giving me an option to invite you. Can you try to invite <laughs> me? Sure. Player options. Hmm. What's up, Xbox Fire Gamer? How's it going? Weird. I'm not uh, getting an invite either. Uh oh. Uh huh. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Xbox Fire Gamer says, and I I forgot about this, but I definitely want to shout this out because I love this game. Um, WRC8 is free this month on Xbox uh, with Xbox uh, Games with Gold. And but Xbox Fire Gamer uh, is is warning people that they give you Sweden as your first stage. It's full of snow, snow banks and trees. And yes, I I remember it well. Um, WRC eight is, I think, if it's not if it wasn't the first, it was one of the first games that I actually like fully reviewed for for audible like a real review and not just like a like an impressions in fact that might be the only one i've ever like fully like for real for real reviewed um because that's a lot of work I and i don't have a lot of time but uh, what were you gonna say joel yeah i thought you uh did mario kart also um i did yeah i guess i did but it, but it was mario kart mobile so it was, I don't know. I mean, you could, con I guess you uh, could consider that a real review, but I, I barely consider that a real game because it was awful. So, <laughs> so, you know, that is what it is. Um, oh, and also okay, so the Zenvo TSRS is now available in Forza Horizon 4. Very cool. Uh, what's what's oh, up, I Joel? A, I saw a screenshot for that. That's the, uh, so Zenvo is a supercar maker, I think, from the Netherlands. Oh, um, that's kind of I forget unique. exactly where. Uh, but their latest car uh, has a very questionable feature. Um, uh oh. To, it has a giant wing on the back, and apparently it pivots. So, like, when you're turning right, the whole thing, like, tilts from the center, like, turns inward to the right. 
with your turn or to the left. Oh. And is uh, that like it, functional in any way, or is it just for like well, weird aesthetics? The, <laughs> or that's the argument. <laughs> su supposedly, I mean, the company thinks it's functional. Uh, I know a lot of people that are like, I don't think that's actually how that works. <laughs> Interesting. I'd be interested to see it based on based on that description alone. I, I bet it would be the kind of car that I would like because I like tacky stuff like that a lot of times. Uh, I'm gonna look it up right now. Okay, so I don't know what I just did. So I I restarted party. my game because I was wondering if oh, okay. uh, yeah. So I'm I'm loading back up. Sorry, I should have told you that. Okay, once you're back on, I think I should be able to invite you. I think basically like. I just had to create a party. Like I went to the party menu, but never, but but, but never actually started the party. And so yes. that's why I was saying. Yep, I bet that's you're right. That's why I wasn't getting the option. <laughs> that's a little confusing. All right. Yep, I have the. Uh, I have the invitation right now. Also, I do. I do very much like the look of this Zenvo. However, that yeah, that's that slanty wing does look weird. I think it would look better if it wasn't slanty. <laughs> if it's... it was just normal. <laughs> Oh, well, if you're going straight, it's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should just lock it into that position. It's, uh, yeah, it's really weird to watch it in motion. Because <laughs> this huge wing just keeps pivoting back and forth. And it's like, hmm. Yeah, is that how that's supposed to work? <laughs> that's super weird. If anything, I would almost be worried that that would, like, s somehow... And w clearly i know nothing about uh anything but i but it seems like that would almost like sl potentially slow down your momentum in some ways it's like i don't know you don't want like a large part of your vehicle autonomously moving when yeah, well i guess so when the rest of it isn't i don't know maybe maybe they haven't figured out where it's all perfect i don't know i'm completely talking yeah. out of my behind the other thing is, is that like nobody else does that with wings right right <laughs> and it's like car companies with a whole lot more resources and know-how uh have never ever done this and like maybe there's a reason <laughs> yeah but hey i mean we're talking about them so that's uh and uh, and it was exciting enough to get a uh, Xbox Fire Gamer and and many others excited excited about its inclusion in Forza Horizon. So I guess for that reason alone, maybe it was worth it. Mm, maybe. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joel. Extreme skepticism from Joel's end there. Um. All right, let's see. Xbox Fire Gamer says the TSRS is the one with the tilting wing. Yep. Uh, oh, and it's the road legal version of the track only Zenbo TSR, which doesn't have the moving wing. Huh? What kind of sense does that make? So I guess that pretty much confirms it's 100% a gimmick then. Because if it was yeah. helpful, <laughs> you'd want it on the track car. <laughs> yeah. Because that's where it would actually like make a real difference. Right. <laughs> wow, that's wild. Uh, still, I I actually really like the overall look of that car, though. Um, J Joel, would you like to go daytime or nighttime? Uh, I figure maybe daytime. Okay. Um, let me see. Ah, performance. That's what I want. Let's see if I can upgrade any of my stuff here. Oh, super plus. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, buy and equip. What do you... Uh, would you say there's like a best order to upgrade things in in this I game? Guess. Huh? Would you say that there's like... What's the ideal order to upgrade... Like... Do you want to upgrade your engine before your your chassis or your drivetrain before your engine or or does it not really matter? Um I mean it kind of depends on the car. I would probably focus on uh power upgrades first though. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, my only car that's worth anything at all in this game is the, uh, is my alpha. So I'm just trying to make that a little, cause I, I never beat this game, so I can't even unlock like the best, best, best stuff. Uh, but it looks like I can, I can upgrade it a little bit. So I'm trying to do that right now. I got a bunch of money. Well, that's kind of nice. Uh, did you happen to see, Joel, that apparently, oh, sorry, I just noticed I got a nitrous upgrade, too, that's kind of cool, um, <laughs> that apparently the people behind Star Wars made it a point in this new novel where they specifically made it a point to have Luke say that, like, midi-chlorians don't matter for sure. <laughs> so they just, like, retcon they retconned all of that completely, which I find uh, very humorous. <laughs> That's, aw That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really funny. But, uh... Find out that Qui-Gon Qui Jinn was, like, the equivalent of an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! That's the Star Wars storyline I want to see. For <laughs> sure. No doubt. You just believed in all this pseudoscience. And, and they're all like, yeah, he was kind of crazy. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Qui-Gon was kind of a nutcase. <laughs> okay, I am, I am beefing up this alpha here. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, Xbox Fire Gamer says, also, mark your calendars for July 7th at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time, which is Nacon Connect. And we're basically going to see TDU3 there. What is, TD what, what is TDU3? Test Drive Unlimited. Oh, sick. And, uh, and also WRC9 as well. That would be wild to see Test Drive Unlimited come back. Yeah, that... Oh, computer, shut up. All right. Yeah, I am very... I don't know much about Test Drive Unlimited, but I'm a big WRC fan. Um, yeah, Test Drive Unlimited, it was a really... It was a really cool series. It had kind of wonky driving mechanics, but um, it was really cool in that it kind of let you live the like dream life of being a millionaire racing supercars um and the first one it took place on oahu in hawaii and basically you had the entire island to drive around and explore oh, that's pretty cool um apparently like the uh it was really very closely accurate to the real highway system in oahu and then the I, second man, one added that. the oh yeah, central Euro I'm, I messed up the time I don't mean to interrupt you I just messed it up it's Central European summertime not Central uh, that's uh <laughs> that's my own dumb dumb American uh, ism uh, also hello Celica <laughs> GT what's up how's it going sorry but sorry Joel I didn't mean to cut you off I just want to correct myself yeah yeah um, second one then added the island of Ibiza oh wow or Ibiza if you if you don't like doing the Spanish lisp. <laughs> I took a pill in Ibiza. That song was a jam. And what was cool was that you, you bought houses, and then the second one, like, you could change the interior of your house, and you had your big garage, so you could go check out your car. When you went and bought a car at a dealership, you could hop in and, like, roll down the windows and honk the horn. Dang, that does sound cool. So is it more... See, I don't know. It's, like... Is it more of like a simi game, or is it more of an arcadey game, or is it uh, the the elusive s attempt at a simcade? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those that tried to straddle the middle. Okay. That's why it was a little bit wonky on the driving mechanics. Um, I would hope that a new one would move a little bit closer to arcadey physics. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested. Oh, apparently the rumor, um, the rumor is that Test Drive Unlimited is going to be in Brazil or Southern France, so that would be pretty cool. Um, so Southern France would make a lot more sense to me than, uh, Brazil. Yeah. Uh, either way, I just like seeing, like, real cities recreated really well in video games. I, I played 
And it, this was an okay game. It didn't blow me away, but I played the first Watch Dogs. But what did kind of mm -hmm. blow me away is it's set in Chicago. And I've only been in, to Chicago a few times, but, like, man, there were some areas in that game where I literally got, like, nostalgia from the time I was in Chicago. Like, because it was so dead on. It was just weird, like, kind of weird, honestly. Um, but I was a fan. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there were parts that were pretty accurate. There were also parts that were kind of, like... Not really sure how this works, but in in Watch Dogs, okay. yeah. Oh, which parts? I I mean, because again, I'm not like the most familiar with Chicago. Just the main. I mean, it was it was a very very shrunken down version. Uh, yeah, Chicago. yeah. No, that's that's true. That's true. It was yeah. It was more like landmark to landmark. <laughs> but like actually, um, playing the crew, the first one. Uh, from Ubisoft, the driving game that's like the whole United States that you can drive. Across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh oh, we lost you, yeah, Joel. Lost okay, there we go. Oh, there, there we go. go. You're back. So the the first crew game, uh, from Ubisoft, the like cross country driving game. Yeah. Like you have the whole United States you can drive across. Yeah, yeah, that had a good representation of Chicago in it. Yeah, like I could drive around it. Like, yeah, this is not bad. Man, that's so cool. <sighs> Video games are sweet. Uh, it was actually not bad in that either. See, that's one that I've never, I've never really played a game that had any representation of Detroit, and I would love to. I love to play Detroit Become Human, but it's, uh, I think that's a PlayStation exclusive. Um, yeah, and I've heard that it's not actually very good. <laughs> see, I've heard mixed things. I've heard, I, I'm. I'd be willing to give it a chance, uh, but admittedly, it's not the kind of game that I really like. I hear it's like a just, it's almost like slightly Telltale style and that you're just like picking, uh, yeah, kind of, which is, I mean, that's cool. I guess I've just, I'm sure there are games that do that amazingly. I've just never played one, but also I don't try very many. So I, I'm sure they like exist right now. Um, yeah, yeah. David Cage is all about the trying to do something that's sort of a blend of movie and video game. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is cool. It's a cool idea. Uh, so I want to catch up on the chat here. Celica GT uh, says, chilling, just dropping in to watch. How you doing? Uh, we're doing all right over here. We got tomorrow off. Uh, it's like a little pre-July 4th holiday, so I'm stoked about that. Um, Lolo, what's up, Lolo? Says... Oh, says, hey, yo, and then gotta go. Sorry. <laughs> Have a nice stream. Hey, no problem, Lolo. Appreciate you hopping in and saying <laughs> hi. No, real, uh, legit. Uh, appreciate you hopping in and saying hi. Uh, Celica GT says, shout outs to the crew. Indeed. Lucky Girl's here. <laughs> What's up, Lucky Girl? Lucky Girl just got the LaFerrari in Need for Speed Heat. Whoa. So that thing's got to be ridiculously fast. Um... Which is very cool. I did not say this at the at the top, but so we're gonna we tried to do this um, on Tuesday with Forza to middling success, mostly because I'm bad at checking the time. But so we uh, we want to start doing it for like anybody who wants to play. Anybody who wants to play, always, almost always, we're down to play. Uh, very rarely are we not down to play uh, with you guys. But just to keep things more like organized. I want to start doing it, like, on the half hours is when we add people. So, like, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and 3.30 um, will be, like, the ideal time to add people just so we don't, uh, like, spend the whole stream adding people. That said, um, I didn't say anything about it at 2, and it's been 20 minutes already. So, if anybody wants to play, let me know. We'll get you in right now, and then we'll add people again at 3. Um, so, definitely let us know in the chat and we will do that um but outside of that joel i'm i'm ready to do a a race if if you are ready um i've okay, just cool. been driving around in this new alpha here getting used to it and it feels it feels pretty good feels pretty good oh so something i was gonna say but you were talking about like you'd like to drive you'd like to uh 
play a game with a good representation of Detroit. Yeah, yeah. One of one of the best I've ever seen is in Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Detro- Detroit is the third city that you go to, and it's it's awesome. Like, you can find uh, the former Kobo Hall and the former uh, Joe Louis Arena. What? Like, that, that big, weird, like, concrete tube thing that connects the, uh, like, parking garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's the whole riverfront and like it's it's it is Detroit and it's like this is super cool. Wow. And it's all in winter so it's all like snowing and things too. Dang, that does sound cool. Yeah, I might have to uh next time I see a sale on that, I might have to pick that up specifically for that reason, just because that does sound very cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And also it's a superb racing game. It's ultra arcadey and it oh. is Love entirely that. to its benefit. Love that. Okay, I have set my sights on a race. All right. Um, I am I am pretty excited to try out the game that uh, we are both going to be able to try out next week. I have not played any amount of it yet, but I'm very stoked yeah, to give that I. a try. But yeah, definitely a, uh, a a special game on the stream. Uh, Tuesday, right? Embargo lifts Monday night, right? So we can do it Tuesday, so. something like that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I will uh, definitely be. We'll have to try to play it over the weekend. <laughs> wow. I just I just hit this guy going very fast. Uh, Lucky Girl says the LaFerrari is amazing in NFS Heat. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Uh, it's not the fastest car in the game. However, it's very, very fun to drive. So what did you have to do to achieve that, Lucky Girl? I assume it's like, it's absolutely uh, crazy. Because um, that's like an extremely, maybe one of the most popular cars or, or most iconic cars, I guess, however you want to say it. But so I imagine you'd have to really put some work in to unlock that one. Do you, here's a question for you, Joel. Do you think that the Wait, am I misremembering? What's the third in the big three between LaFerrari, P1, and what? A Lamborghini what? Uh, not a Lamborghini. Oh, it's not uh, a Lamborghini. Por- uh, Porsche uh, 918 Spider. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Maybe I'm just... I don't know. I'm a, I'm a self-admitted... Por- I'm not a Porsche hater. They're just not my favorite. But I feel like they really got, I can't be the only one who frequently forgets Porsche's role in, it's like every, I feel like everybody knows the P1, everybody knows the LaFerrari, but I don't know if as as many people know really any Porsche, Uh, people certainly know the name Porsche, but I feel like their individual models aren't quite as uh, popular. Uh a very wrong opinion here <laughs> i mean sure in auto journalism circles sure but i mean like for the general public who i have i have three numbers for you nine one one right but i don't nine eleven before i worked here i had never heard of a porsche 911 like what is wrong with you? Like, no nothing that's just normal people th- no it's just no, that's no, normal no, people normal, normal people know what a 911 is. i don't it's think they the, do sure, it's it's the German Corvette. Everybody, every rich guy that wants a sports car and is too uppity to buy a Corvette buys a 911. <laughs> and if they can't, but and they, if they can't afford a 911, they buy a Boxster. Okay, but the average person isn't a rich guy. 
But the average person knows what a 911 is. I don't know, man. I don't yes, think they, they do. do. I don't think they do. You are you are so wrong. And I hope the chat backs me up on this. Well, yeah, cuz the chat is full of like car people. I just think that is a very much an uh, like an auto journalist bubble. Uh, oh, that that we live in. No, the 911 is one of those sports cars that almost everybody knows about. Man, I don't know. I just don't think it is. It's Yes it is. Oh my gosh, Eric. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're just wrong on this. <laughs> I don't know, man. You're sounding real b bubble talk, real auto journalist bubble talk to me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what? I'm even going to hop on. I'm going to hop on our office chat. I'm going to tell them that they need to hop in to back me up on this. I'm not saying nobody's heard of the 911. I'm just saying way more people are familiar with a P1 and a LaFerrari than are familiar with no, the 911. No, no, they're not. More car people know about those those hyper cars than normal people know about a 911. Wait, huh? Say that again? Uh oh, hello? Eric, are you there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there you go. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Um, say that again? What? It, more car people know about... So, so, like, those hypercars that you mentioned, the McLaren and the Ferrari, mm -hmm. that's well known among car people circles. But no! I, See, that's where you're 100% wrong. Those no, cars, everybody it's knows... The car people don't care about those as much anymore because they're old. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, but that proves my point because the average Joe still does. Like, like, dude, those cars are so hot. Like on Twitter, like people still go crazy over those cars. Eric? Hello? Hey there. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Hello? this stupid, this connection is so annoying. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, but no, I think, I think that's where, that's where you're dead wrong. And, and I think that proves my point because the normies still do th think those cars are hot. I think people in the know are like, yeah, those are like old and not not cool anymore. But I think yeah, that- but if, but if you ask someone on the street, like, which of these cars do you know? A LaFerrari, a P1, or a 911? Like, everybody's gonna know what a 911 is. Nobody's gonna have any idea what a P1 wow. is. Wow, I they're mean, I just think you what couldn't what be more only, wrong. <laughs> they're only gonna know what a LaFerrari is because it has Ferrari. Okay, let me, let me, uh, maybe I'm misarticulating my point. I think that... I'm afraid I lost you again. Uh, this there is so are. annoying. <laughs> um, no, I think I, I, I may be... I am not... You are completely misrepresenting my point, Joel. I am not saying normal people don't know about the 911. I'm saying a normal person <laughs> is going to way be way more familiar with a LaFerrari and a P1 than a 911. Now let me now I'm worried that I'm misrepresenting my point here, so I want to I want to clarify that my point is not that if you showed them a picture of a Porsche, a Ferrari and a McLaren that they wouldn't be able to be like, "Well, that one's the Porsche, that one's the everybody would be able to do that." My argument is that if you if you said name the model names of these three cars i think most i think almost everybody would get the p1 i think most people would get the la ferrari and i think the least people would get the 911 that's all i'm saying i'm no no i'm certainly not saying whatever you just slandered me with in the group chat <laughs> Now, more people would know what a 911 is. I just don't think that's true. I man, I almost wish I almost wish that uh Eric. that uh Oh my god, what Eric. is it? Yeah. Oh. I this is so, like I've been able to hear you. This is really annoying. Um but I wish the Woodward Dream Cruise was still around. Because I would love to prove you wrong on this. I'm so sure I'm right. Just because I feel like I'm more ingrained with non car like social media than you than anybody else in the office probably <laughs> just because i'm sure most people would like look at a mclaren p1 or a ferrari la ferrari and be like what's that is that a lamborghini i think 
Oh, jeez, I'm choking on my like I, uh, I don't doubt functional people, water beverage. People would be, people would be more impressed by those than a 911 because sure. 911s are really 911s are super common. Um. No, I, 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 I agree, but because I think that's to its detriment because you see them every once in a while, so like you don't. Well, okay, let me speak for myself. Around here, in, in, in our area, you'll see the occasional 911. I would say it's not uncommon, uh, particularly around where our office is. Our office is in, like, a nicer area for anybody who, who doesn't know. Um, so you see 911s driving around every, every once in a while. But you never see, ever, a, a P1 or a LaFerrari. So because of that, I think the average person would be like, what's that, at some point in their life, and like, commit it to memory. But you see, that's different than saying that people know about something. Like... How? How if so? something's more... You're talking about, like, what's something that's, like, impressive and attention-getting, and will be like, whoa, what is... Oh, that? no, no, I'm not... Then I'm... Then... Wh what I mean by that, I say that to say that, uh... And then that would cause it to stick in someone's mind. Not that, uh, I, I just don't think, like, people see 911s, I just don't think they know that it's, that it's a Porsche 911. I just don't think it's, like, yeah, that I, iconic of a car outside of automotive circles, where it clearly is the most iconic car. <laughs> no, people, people recognize it, and part of that is that, like, the 911 has been around for decades, and has... The design of it is very evolutionary. Like, you look at all of them lined up next to each other, and they all look very much like each other. <clears throat> yeah, I would argue none I mean, of them it's... look really good, but... Well, but that's a different... That's yeah, a, yeah, that's, that's, a, totally that's, a, totally, that's a totally that's a totally different thing, but, uh... I mean, it's, it's very... It is the German Corvette. Like, it's been around for decades, and it is an established sports car that like people know about i mean like somebody that has that like lived in detroit all their years went for and worked for gm and is finally retiring and like to go and buy a corvette because they can they can do that now somebody like in la or something that has been living a pretty good like upper middle class lower upper class life and they're retiring and they want a fancy sports car they go and buy a 911 yeah i mean you <laughs> You said nothing that I disagree with, but I just don't think, I, I just don't think the average person knows about Porsche 911s. I mean, I, I'm like, for, I'm drifting from my original point, but as all, all I'm trying to say is just the, I think the P1 and the uh, LaFerrari are much more iconic and much more well known. And I, but I, but I agree with your points, but I think that the points of like the, the 911 being more common is like i don't know i mean i see and it's like it's different for you i'm sure because you are able to instantly identify every car on the road i don't know or care like i see dozens of cars every single day that i have no clue what model they are like and i think that's just the average person and i think and i think because 911s aren't as flashy as the the la ferrari and the uh the p1 i think those fall into that category i think people would be able to identify them as porsches i just think the 911 part is like what is that for That's most the, people ugh. not all people clearly but for mo for the average joe that's all i'm saying <laughs> and I'm i i'm still i know you're wrong <laughs> i mean i know i 100 percent know i'm right I just think you've been living in the uh, the auto journalism bubble for too long. Also, I'm, I'm really I'm really I'm sucking today. Head. I'm just shaking my. Oh, head. I know. I can I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it on my end. <laughs> um, oh, I just realized I've had the. Uh... Oh my god! Why do I have? 30 slack messages all right let me cut let me catch up on the chat here sorry chat i had the oh, uh, yeah. work chat up because i was trying to defend myself from joel's slander um i was glad to see that you responded <laughs> <laughs> um 
um, Lucky Girl says, or responded to my question a million years ago. Sorry about that. Uh, you unlock <laughs> you unlock it by progressing through the game. It's 1.2 million to buy. Uh, also, the LaFerrari has a Ferrari FXXK Evo body kit, so you can feel like you're driving the FXX. Uh, man, that is kind of a, a weird, like, tongue twister. FXXK Evo uh, without having to get two mil. So that's kind of cool. Um, Celica GT says they are, they're old, but nothing has come out to replace them. Uh, stream getting spicy. Can we get a stream poll? Uh, we, how do you... <laughs> I mean, we could do a poll, but I would lose the poll in this stream because everybody here are, uh, are car people. Uh, but we can... Is there... Is there... How can we do a pool? Uh, I'd be down. Um, Ku... Kubini? Uh, what's up? How's it going? Uh, says, why not use an Xbox One X? Because <laughs> I'm poor. Uh, Alex... <laughs> Alex Boo says... Uh, why, hello there, auto parts shop member. Uh, what? <laughs> and then Alex says... Can I join? Um, uh, y yes, I missed it. Yes. Uh, let's actually, let's scoop up Alex. So anybody who wants to join, let me know in the next 60 seconds, or you're going to have to wait until three. <laughs> um, oh, wait. A ah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. We got to back out. It's only 16 stupid people. All right. So I'm, I'm, right. I'll back out. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll scoop you up, Alex. Uh, and yes, I did. I did get your message, Lucky Girl. I'm sorry. I'm I'm slow and dumb. Uh, all right, quit the lobby. But oh, Alex says, wait one minute. I I just opened my Xbox. All right, that's okay. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. That'll give anybody else time. Speak now or forever hold your peace. If you want to play, <laughs> now's the time. I'll go ahead and start creating a party. Or actually maybe you Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and create create the party. I'll I'll get you in here right now. Um Oh, whoops. Whoops. That does remind me. And I I didn't catch the stream on Tuesday, but I did see the title. Um Yeah, you definitely called the <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was uh like I was confident, but I I didn't I don't know if I was that confident. <laughs> so that was a uh... because like because I started seeing headlines a few days before that, and I was like, and the the first one I saw was like, wow, Eric did like <laughs> the first thing I thought was like, wow, Eric nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it just seems like uh, I'm basing all of my predictions on the fact that just companies make weird decisions like that <laughs> i just whatever's the weirdest decision that's probably gonna be the one they make <laughs> um lucky girl says ah sick all right alex is good to go um all right invite inviting to party here uh what was microsoft I... we make decisions that don't make sense yeah pretty pretty much <laughs> <laughs> um Lucky Girl says, you seem to love the Alfa Romeo uh, Giulia Quadrifoglio. It's not so... I mean, I do. It's, it's a great car. But it's more so that I have five cars total in this game. And this is just my fastest one. <laughs> so that's... Uh, <laughs> but I am a fan of this car. Um, I remember... I think we had an Alfa 4C in the office way back in the day. And I had never driven an alpha or really any car at all that didn't have power steering and holy crap oh, yeah. that was weird <laughs> yeah that's a and that's a car that without power steering is gonna be a bear at some yeah speed. <laughs> yeah yeah that was a that was a weird one for sure <laughs> but i mean i guess i see the uh I see the uh, like attraction to it though. If you're if you're like the kind of person who like really loves to like feel like you want to feel everything. I mean, you mm -hmm. you feel you feel everything. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but. my last Miata didn't have power steering, and 
And yeah, it was it was kind of rough if you were trying to do like a parallel parking maneuver. Oh or man, I can't even imagine. But, <laughs> but once you got going, it was great, and it and the steering feel was amazing. Yeah. Um, Al <laughs> oh man. All right, Alex. But, um, we'll yeah, there. Oh, there, there are definitely cars that, like, po power assist is actually a pretty wonderful thing. I mean. There are times when not having it is nice, but there are times that it's terrible. Like, I remember driving yeah, yeah. a first year, like a 64 and a half, 65 Ford Mustang, totally base model, like no options on it at all. It had the straight six, it had a manual transmission, it had no power brakes, and it had no power steering, and it was awful. <laughs> Yeah. I hated driving it every moment. Dude, no power took... brakes. Oh. No power brakes. That's, like, I can deal with no power steering, but no power brakes. Yeah, that and sounds awful. Most In most cars, is horrible. You have to push so hard on the brake pedal to do the most minimal of stops. <laughs> Dude, it's... I mean, it seems scary. Like... <laughs> yeah, I would not... Now, I would not feel safe <laughs> with now, myself. there are exceptions. There are exceptions. Like, I... Volkswagen has been giving out a whole bunch of, uh, of their vintage cars for journalists to drive. Um, and you can read about that on Autoblog. Hey. Uh, I, I just recently um, had a 1964 Beetle. And... It has no power assist for anything, but it's such a light car that it doesn't matter. <laughs> wow, like brakes, yeah. Were, like, the brakes were great. Like, I never missed not having power braking at all, and it had no it had no power steering assist, but, like, it's just so light, and, like, it had so little tire that, like, it just, it was a breeze to drive. It felt like a normal car. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You could probably just muscle that thing around. Um, mm hmm uh, Lucky Girl says, I think Need for Speed Heat took some car ideas from Forza Horizon 4, uh, which is okay, but come on, when have we ever seen that uh, Julia Quadrifoglio in NFS? Yeah, but I mean, I think all... I mean, I would think the goal for most of these games is to get, like, the most, like, and the most slash the hottest cars um, in, in the game, so I bet more and more... And I feel like Alpha's kind of had a glow up in the past, like, five-ish years. Um, but well, I think a big part of it is how much Alfa Romeo was talked up by Top Gear for so many years. Yeah, yeah, that would make uh, a lot of sense. That would make a lot of sense. I th I'm sure that was the first Scary. time I ever heard about it, was on, was on Top Gear. And all they're talking about, like, you're not a real petrol head until you own an Alfa Romeo, which I disagree with. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anything like, I don't know. I, I, I hate that. I know people say it in jest sometimes, but, like, that, that it's just, it's gatekeeping. I hate gatekeeping. That's so annoying to me. Yeah. It's like, you're not a real blank unless you do blank. It's like, shut up. Right. Like, <laughs> that's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but... And I mean, I'm sure there's no malice behind it, but, you know. Yeah. It just, it hashtag feels bad, man, when you consider yourself a petrol head and you don't own that. And you, you're like, oh, man, these uh these guys who I really respect, like, don't think I'm worthy of, of being a gearhead with them. Mm -hmm. But have you heard anything about, um, what has the Grand Tour been up to lately is that show like good and continuing i haven't really heard anything about it at all well so they did a special with boats several months ago oh I never wow watched it <clears throat> and i'm not entirely sure where the grand tour sits right now i mean certainly they can't do filming at the moment <laughs> yeah yeah that's for sure um Eric. Yeah, I, I can hear you. This is so... Uh, no. You know what? I'm going to 
restart my uh, my headset real quick. Give me give me like 20 seconds here. The chat will still be able to hear me, but I'm just hopefully this will maybe help our connection, Joel. Cool. Um, cool. Uh oh, my mom says that her first car was a 1969 Mustang, but it was automatic. Uh she says I don't think I would have done well with a manual. Um, Lucky Girl says, yeah, people sleep on the Alfa Romeo way too much. Hey, and Autoblog, uh, senior producer, Chris McGraw. I mean, I assume this is Chris McGraw. I don't know anybody else who goes by the quick draw, uh, is, is popping in the chat. Says, top, ge top gear gatekeeping is the worst. Celica GT agrees. <laughs> um, and Celica GT says, if you can find joy in what you drive, that's all that matters. I completely agree. Um... Oh yeah, and then a little more context on uh, on the Grand Tour. Uh, they went to Vietnam with those boats. Uh, that's pretty interesting. And Tom the Boss, what's up, Tom the Boss? Says, do you have a level fifty crew? <laughs> no, uh, I'm sure not even close. Unfortunately. Um, uh, Alex says. No, oh, I see. Like, yeah, no power braking is like a level five, like grunt, and then power braking is like the level fifty boss. <laughs> <laughs> or reverse those if you have to fight them. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I found out today, I found out today that two people that I've known for years, uh, in, I, I've never known these two people, like, I, like, we've never hung out all together, but I've known both of these people fairly well for probably like five, maybe even ten years. I just discovered today for the first time that these two random people are brothers and it's been and it's been kind of blowing my mind all day because I didn't know that you could know two people for so long and not know they were brothers um yeah I'm not entirely sure how that would happen I do, I don't even know how so what it is is one of them was in um I know them via actually Autoblog senior producer Chris McGraw's uh, brother, at least one of them, uh, younger brother. So Chris and I graduated high school the same year. And, oh, I realize I can exit this garage. I don't know what I'm doing still sitting in here. Um, <laughs> so we graduated high school the same year. And then uh, Chris's brother graduated high school a year or two after us. And so uh, Chris and I are... are very close and i've been very close with uh his brother tom for many 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 years uh 10 over 10 years now as well and so in chris and i's grade um i knew it's, gee this is such a dumb story because it's gonna be so confusing because one of the people is also named chris uh, so we knew another Chris in my grade, and then Tom had a friend whose name was Mark, who I always hung out with with Tom, and those two people were the brothers, to make a short story way too long. Um, but it's just, it's been blowing my mind. I, I had no idea. Cool story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Uh, but it's just, I saw, I had a text about it, and, uh, and I was like, yeah, I don't know how... I really managed that, to be honest. Um, did you did you like never hear their last names? Yeah, I never. Well, I knew the one. I knew um, uh, the older one's last name, but I. But yeah, I never knew the the younger sibling obviously had the same last name, or else I would have made that connection. But I always just knew him as Mark. Um. Because I mean, admittedly, I think like my younger brother. Um, and me, like, if you had, if you hadn't heard the, if you hadn't heard our last names, and oh, like, I'm the leader of this party. I just realized that. Yeah, I was gonna say, right. I'm, I'm just waiting for you. All right. Uh, uh, if you had met us individually and like never seen us like together or anything, 
Well, actually, even if you'd seen us together, you might not necessarily realize that we're brothers. Like, uh, like he's got like dark black hair and brown eyes. And, Whoa! I mean, I, really? Yeah. Oh man. No, we don't really look that much alike. <laughs> wow, that's wild. I did, I actually didn't even know you had a brother until this very moment. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, genetics are crazy. Uh, so Chris is in yeah. the chat. <laughs> Says you didn't realize Mark and Chris were siblings. That's hilarious. I'm talking to Chris right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that yeah, I had no idea until today. And actually, the way I discover that is just randomly on Facebook. Uh, another mutual friend of ours, for your benefit, Chris, it was Brendan. Um, I he just happened to pop up on Facebook, so I clicked on him. And I was like, uh, oh, yeah, I wonder what Brendan's up to. And then I saw Mark and on Facebook, and it had his last name. And I was like, hold on. That cannot possibly be <laughs> his last name. Uh, but it was. So for some reason, that event was canceled. So I will start a new one here. Um, all right, starting the event up right now. I must have missed the invite. Sorry. No, no, you're good. All right, invite coming in right now. There it is. Um, and and Hector, what's up, Hector? How's it going? Welcome. Uh, oh, and Alex is close to getting a Ferrari. Nice. And Lucky Girl says, I'm sorry, but Are Jerry you? Clark, Jeremy Clarkson looks seems like a snob sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a controversial statement whatsoever. Uh, no, actually, he would probably agree with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think he's, uh, he kind of enjoys being uh, kind of a big a-hole, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, yeah. who's not... Are are you in this? Are you in this? Do you accept it? Yeah, I, I already accepted. Alex, accept. <laughs> of course, Chris McGraw says we're all Chris at heart. There we go. Nice. At least, hopefully, we got all. Yeah, three hopefully. Of us. I don't know. <laughs> it might. It might just be you and me. <laughs> I will say I'm not the biggest fan of how this game alerts you that your party leader has started a race. It's very, it's too unobtrusive. <laughs> it should be a little more yeah, intrusive. It's, it's quite subtle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah, lie. I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. There, there's a couple of UI things that could use some improvement. Totally, totally. Although, I mean, I guess, you know, they're... Done, done with this game now, so hopefully they take it into account for the... Oh, but they won't, because they're not developing the next Need for Speed. So hopefully the next developers <laughs> take some <laughs> notes here. Yeah. Make some good changes. Still, though, I am impressed with the functionality. Like, this this has been working really pretty seamlessly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's a testament to the fact that, uh, particularly Sony... Um, was kind of oh what's the what's the the phrase it's like planned obsolescence it's like clearly this could have been done for a long time but they just like turned the switch off and that was kind of right. <laughs> that was kind of man i will never that was such a a glorious day when i it must have been i think it was Fortnite when they quote unquote forgot yeah. <laughs> that is such a baller move whoopsies <laughs> we accidentally turned on crossplay guess it's possible <laughs> That's such a, oh man, and, what a baller move. And after that, like, Microsoft and Nintendo were like, okay, fine, we'll start doing this more. Yes. But then Sony was still like, nah. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> yeah. Which is, you know, I see I see their perspective. They're like, we're in the lead. Why would we do this? But right. <laughs> it's because you seem like jerks if you don't. <laughs> yeah. But eh, they, they, they came around, though. I mean, credit where it's due. Seems like everybody's coming around to this, and uh, that is good. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's funny how much I'm I'm really hoping for more crossplay in the next generation. 
Yeah, same. I mean, I would guess and, and hope that it'll be just be the norm. Um, I mean, you never know, obviously, but I really hope that that's, like, the, the goal, at least, for most of the developers. There's no reason for it not to be. I think clearly we have solved, with, with the exception of the few, uh, you know, the few people who like to cry really loud about keyboard mouse versus controller. <laughs> I think we've pretty much solved the gap there, at least in terms of yeah. for the general, like, casual gamer. Uh, it's mm -hmm. absolutely fine. So, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I, I hope they... I hope it happens all the time. And it is funny, like, in the past, consoles weren't, like, you would occasionally find some PC to console uh, connections. Sometimes it was just because Microsoft was cross-promoting something between Xbox and PC. But I remember when Portal 2 launched on PlayStation 3, it uh, would let you do multiplayer with someone on PC that was running on Steam. And you could actually transfer, like, your save from PlayStation to Steam if you wanted to... Whoa! Uh, PC. When was this? This was on PlayStation 3. This was for Portal 2. Holy crap, that's, uh, that's some pretty innovative stuff back in the day. I guess it's not surprising that it was Portal 2, back when Valve made games and they were incredible. I guess they're making games again. Yeah. They they uh they dropped Alex, but mm -hmm. Yeah, I keep I know it's probably not gonna happen, but gosh, it would be really cool if they added PlayStation VR support for that. Like if it would run on PS five. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, completely agree. That's mm, yeah, I don't know. Part sure. part of me is uh, like part of me is like yeah, it would make sense for them to do it, but then the other part of me is like, but Steam sales! So, <laughs> well, so maybe they wouldn't, also, but... And also, Valve has a VR system that they want to sell. Wait, do they really? Which which VR system is Valve specifically? Uh, I, I didn't realize they were exclusive to only one VR system. Oh, well, no, it works on basically any pc vr system ah yeah but, i got you i got you but obviously they want to be like hey you can't play this on any vr system but we have our own yeah which honestly from what i have read and seen about their vr system it is kind of awesome one of the one of the big positive points to it is that it actually has straps so you can strap you can strap the controllers onto your hand so you can actually like let go Whoa, yeah, that is of cool. the controllers, but there's still motion. So then you can actually like grab and it feels all more natural. Dang, that is cool. Do you happen to know what it's called? What Valves is called? Uh, gosh, why can't I remember? That does sound cool. um, I know there's the Vive, there's the Oculus, and and there's PSVR. And obviously, yeah, the valve one is. The valve oh, by the way, I said I uh, started a, a race. Heads up, you know what? Let me. Oh, let, I'll I'll you, I, I'll back up and uh, I'll start a new one. Okay, because I because I got an invite, but it looked like it was from someone else in the party. Yeah, I got a. Uh, on the water. All right, here we go. I sent another one. I sent another one. There it is. I've joined. Party up, peeps. Nice. Uh, hey, lo and lucky, <laughs> lucky girl says, Jeremy Clarkson hates the Ferrari F50. Like, come on, how can you hate that? I don't know. He's a weird. I mean, he's a weird guy. I mean, th there can be reasons to hate a supercar. Yeah, I <laughs> the price tag is one. <laughs> but actually, we we just had a review go up for uh, the Ferrari F8 Spider. And I don't know. I just, I just, I got really annoyed at the at how expensive <laughs> it is, and how it's not even like a super special, like a super ultra special Ferrari. 
Like it's it starts at three hundred thousand dollars, and the one that our reviewer drove had nine had ninety four thousand dollars in options. Oh, uh, that's that's disgusting. And the <laughs> worst the worst option was Apple CarPlay for forty two hundred dollars. What? That's insane. Just hack it yourself. That must be possible. Oh. <laughs> That's insane. Especially for a feature that is free on most normal computers. Yeah. There must be, man, I would be so shocked if there was not a post on some subreddit that's like, hey, here's how to hack Apple CarPlay into your system here. Don't don't pay forty two hundred dollars. <laughs> well, but here but here's the thing. People with that kind of money Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. Yeah, they'll just, just do like, it. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's pocket change. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's disgusting. Hey, if you have that much money, you have too much money. Give some of it away. Because yeah. you're disgustingly rich. And nobody likes you, probably. <laughs> Maybe that was harsh, but <laughs> not untrue. <laughs> Viva la revolution. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. I was, just, I was so annoyed when I saw that. I was like, ugh. Well, and that's actually one of the reasons why, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to bring up our argument earlier. I'm just this is this is this is meant to be separate. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, this, this, this is one of the reasons why I do like Porsche because their cars are not cheap by any means, yeah. and they have plenty of their own egregious, uh, expensive options. However. They, they offer so many cars with, like, Ferrari-level performance for significantly less. And almost every single Porsche I've driven, I've been like, holy crap, this is so good. It's kind of annoying. It's so good to drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. I, and for my own personal... I know I, like, briefly alluded to the fact that I'm not a huge Porsche fan in general. But the only reason... I've never driven one. It's solely, mm -hmm. and let me amend that even by saying I absolutely love Porsche Boxsters. I think those look incredible. Those are my favorite looking Porsche by far. Um, mm. But the other one, particularly the 911, it's just so, like, bubbly. It just seems so yeah. bubbly. I just don't, I don't know. I just don't, like, it's like somebody had a good looking car and then they stuck a straw into it and blew some air into it like a little bit and just puffed it up a little. <laughs> it's like, why? Just keep it a little slimmer. But <laughs> obviously, that's just my own personal taste. But, but and it does, well, and it barely even makes sense because I also loathe G wagons because they're too boxy, which is exactly the opposite thing. <laughs> so I don't know. I just feel like I like the ones that strike the balance. Yeah. Well, and it was funny, like, before I got into this industry and was able to, like, drive a lot of these cool cars, um, for the longest time I was like, there's no way Porsches are as good as, as everybody says they are, because every single review for decades about, like, 911s and things, especially, like, if they were being compared to something that was more affordable, but equivalently uh, potent, like a Corvette or something, it's always like, wow, yeah, the Porsche is just, it's got that, it's got that something, something. Like, it just, it really brings everything together. And when I finally got a chance to drive, like, a recent Porsche, it was like, okay, now it's time to finally know, is, <laughs> is, is the hype. Yeah. Like, is this, and every single one that I've driven, I'm like, dang it, they really are that good. It's really annoying. Man. I mean, that that's impressive for them as a, uh. As a company, though, to seemingly have such a, uh, what's the word? Like such a, such a inarguable stamp of quality, I guess. Yeah. Um. And admittedly, like, their SUVs don't drive as nice as their sports cars, well, but hey, I mean, that's to be expected. <laughs> yeah. The first, uh, Porsche I was ever, I didn't drive it, but I had ever been inside was a, uh, Oh no! Which one's the SUV? It's not the Cayenne. Uh, Macan. 
I don't think it was that one either. Did they have like an older one? I... No, that, that's what okay, I'm maybe thinking. it was, and then maybe it was the Macan. Maybe it was the Macan. Um, how, like how long ago was this? Like ten years, more than. Let's see, that. I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to. Th I'm trying to remember when the Macan came out. Like I think it was. It was within the last ten years. I don't know if it was more than ten years ago. Yeah, I re so. Anyway, <laughs> I could be, I could I mean it was a long time ago, but I feel like I have this memory of like at the at the time this was a newer thing, um, and and yeah it was a uh, it was very cool. It was my first time out to California. We got picked up in this Porsche. I was like, oh my god, it must be so crazy to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> picked up from LAX in a Porsche. Man, it feels good to be a gangster. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And then our uh, and then our host out there took us to this. Uh, By the way, are, are, are we heading to a race? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, coming up on it right here. I didn't here. know if you were. I didn't know if you were just like cruising randomly. Nah, nah. Here, here we go. Um, but yeah, then our our host out there treated us to some ridiculously high end sushi, uh, which thankfully mm. he paid for. But he was like, yeah, this is where uh, this is where like the celebs go for lunch. And actually, when we were there, uh, we saw the guy. I don't know if anybody's gonna get this reference, but the guy who played the cop in Heroes <laughs> was actually there. <laughs> but it's it's like it's almost coming back. Yeah, but it's like very very fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, but man, that was good sushi. Oh my god, it was the first time I ever had sushi, and I've never had sushi as good as that ever again. Man, I only ever watched, I think, the first season of Heroes. That's probably all you need to watch. It falls off a cliff pretty quick. <laughs> but I did really love that first. I i mean, I don't know. I, I think I loved most of it, but I'm... Eric? Oh. Ah. Uh, yeah, I think I loved most of it, but I also am an, am an apologist for anything like that. So it's just, like, <laughs> right up my, uh, my alley. I do think probably the first two maybe three seasons were like legitimately really good but then the writer strike happened and it like ruined all television oh. forever i guess but See, after like after the first season after the whole save the cheerleader save the world thing i, I felt like it started getting really complicated really fast and i was losing i was losing the plot yeah yeah it definitely went into the the classic superhero tropes of like time and reality bending and like different dimensions and stuff like that which is i mean that's cool if it's done well but it's hard to do it well in my opinion yeah but that said i'm still a big time heroes guy i, I like that show i should i should give it a rewatch mm -hmm. and i liked their little uh miniature reboot of it that they did more recently i thought that was pretty good too uh, oh, I forgot that that was a thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it must not have rated well because we never got more of it, but it's kind of unfortunate because I thought it was cool. But also, does the world really need more superhero stuff right now? We got plenty. Marvel and DC have got it locked up. <laughs> and coming from you, that's that's that's. Something. Yeah, you're no for sure, <laughs> for sure. It's just like there's like too much. I don't even watch. I mean, I thought I was gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna watch. Arrow and The Flash and all of those shows forever. And then there became 18,000 of them. And I was like, whoa. Does anybody care? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know if I do anymore. I still care about the Marvel ones, but I'm a, I'm a Marvel fanboy. Yeah, I kind of I want to start watching um, Watchmen. Same. Uh, I've heard that one's very really good. good. Yeah. And that's HBO. I mean... Anything HBO, I think, gets the automatic. Oh, yeah, this is probably pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's also probably why I haven't watched it yet, because I don't have HBO. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, and also, like, I, I was, like, part of the reason that I, it started, in, like, I was becoming intrigued is also part of the reason why I'd be a little bit uh, reluctant to watch it, because apparently um, a lot of the topics are, like, hyper-relevant all of a sudden. <laughs> the past year or so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and so like it intrigues me but 
but also at the same time, it's like, man, reality is rough enough. Yeah. I, don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I need to hammer it home by a... Uh, by a superhero show. Yeah, I guess it just depends on if in the show, like, do the good guys win. If not, it might be kind of a downer. But if they do, <laughs> then, may then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, I mean, in the Watchmen universe, I don't even... Are there even really... Are there good guys in Watchmen? I don't even really know. It's just a kind of, like... Yeah. It's a bunch of, like, extremely flawed heroes from what I... From what I know about it. Extremely flawed. Yeah. They, I mean... Based on the Zack Snyder movie that I watched. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Which which I thought was interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't hate it. I don't love it, but yeah. I, I don't hate it. Yeah, which I think is probably where a lot of people stand. And actually, yeah. like, I, watching videos and reading articles about, like, comparing the movie to the uh, graphic novel, that the movie was pretty faithful. <laughs> Yeah, the only big thing I hear people complain about is in the graphic novel, like, the I guess spoilers for, like, a 30-year-old story, but uh, yeah. in the graphic novel, the ending was, like, some crazy, like, alien squid thing, <laughs> and then and in the movie, they're oh. like, that's a, li that's a little weird, we're not going to yeah, do any of that. I think, <laughs> I think I do remember hearing about that, and I think they probably could make the right decision to, uh, to drop that part. Yeah. Because that would kind of be out of left field. Yeah. Although, I... Like, well, actually, nev never mind. Because this might be a potential spoiler for the show. Which is much more recent. So I don't want to spoil that. But, but yeah. Um, yeah, I always thought that was funny. Just crazy aliens, like, psychic squids. <laughs> um, oh, man. I'm... Miss I'm uh, let me get caught up on the chat here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Celica GT says, That's how the luxury makers nickel and dime you in reference to the uh, four grand Apple CarPlay. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chow. Chow's here. What's up, Chow? Um, Lucky Girl says, If it wasn't a McCann or a, Ky or a Cayenne... Uh, is it Cayenne or Cayenne? I always say Cayenne, but it's spelled like Cayenne. Um, I mean, I say Cayenne. But okay, I I don't think I don't think either is technically incorrect. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then it was probably a. G I've never heard of this Gembala. Gembala. Oh, so that is a South African tuner company. Whoa! They, yeah, it wasn't one of those. It definitely was a Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's that sounds wild though. Uh, Celica GT says, I went to the Porsche Experience Center in Atlanta last year and got to drive a Cayman and 911. They are absolutely fantastic. Dang, that's, uh, that's super cool. For sure, heading to the, uh, Porsche Experience Center. Oh, snap! Alex has enough money for the Ferrari! Let's go! That's huge! Where are you? Is this you right behind me? This is Joel no, right me. behind me. <laughs> Um, Celica says, good catch, Lucky. Shoutouts to the Jambala. Um, Alex says, BRB, but taking my laptop with me. All right. Whoa, you're right in front of me. Um, all right. I'm looking up a, a race here. It's, try it's trying to push you around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just, oh, my God. I haven't thought of that Matchbox, tw yeah, that Matchbox 20 song just got stuck in my head. I want to push you way around. Well, I will. Well, I will. <laughs> that is 90s as it gets. Yep. Man, Rob Thomas. Shout out to that guy. I wonder what he's up to nowadays. Sweet. I three starred that jump. <laughs> oh, nice. I got two. Oh. Huh? Uh, it won't let me... <laughs> it wouldn't let me jump off this cliff. That's kind of dumb. I didn't think it would respawn me. To, I don't think you were supposed to be able to get over that uh, barrier. <laughs> well, that is, uh, that is my specialty. <laughs> Breaking games in new and exciting ways. <laughs> like, I saw you go... Like, I was going around that corner, oh, wow, you do not, you do not like going, uh, you do not like following the 
road. No, here. no, <laughs> no, I don't. Man, can you? The previous one, I just like saw you go barreling over the barrier. Like, uh, where'd you go? I uh, I <laughs> think about often. I think about the fact that I probably would be like the prime candidate for really getting into like off road, like four wheeling, like off road four wheeling. But I just seem so sketchy. Like I'd be so afraid I would just die immediately. But uh, I bet I'd love it. I've, also, I've seen you play Mud Runner and also that uh, side by side off roading game. I don't think you have the patience for off roading. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess maybe. I guess more like tri like. I don't know. I, so I, one single time in my entire life, I've truly been like up north like truly four wheel like off roading like trail running uh mm -hmm. and i guess maybe i don't know i could be wrong here but it seemed like the getting stuck like we didn't get stuck once it was like nothing but speed and madness in in real life but in <laughs> but in the games i feel like you get stuck every <laughs> every minute and that's infuriating um but I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, like, like there are different kinds of off-roading. Yeah, and I don't know how to specifically yeah. differentiate between them. So. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just like going fast and and off-road. <laughs> but I don't like getting stuck in mud. Whoa! This uh, <laughs> this pole just fell in and disappeared. Oh, come on! What the? Oh! Are you gonna be able to start Sorry, this baby. race? Yeah, I'm just gonna bribe him. <laughs> nice. Like, I was just moving around, and then he crashed, and then the cop crashes into me and starts to chase. BS. <laughs> <laughs> That's Yeah, I'm watching you. I'm watching you, cop. You drive away. Uh oh. You drive away. <laughs> oh, it says event canceled. Hold on. We gotta start. What? Uh. Oh, maybe, maybe it did drop me out of it. The Ferrari. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you mean by that, Alex. Uh, Lucky Girl says, uh, funny story, I three-starred a drift zone in that game by literally just going outside of one of those and riding the rail. Whoa, and riding the rail while I drifted? Dang. Did you screen record it? That sounds wild. Uh, the expense, I don't get what you're trying to say, Alex. Are you trying to say you don't like it? <laughs> like, what's the, I mean, you probably have to upgrade it. You probably, yeah, you probably just have to upgrade it to make it good. I would assume. Yeah, you just got to upgrade it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, Alex says, come stock with pretty much ultimate plus everything. Well, well, maybe you just need to get good then, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lucky Girl says... Uh, oh, I guess Jambala made actual cars, too? They didn't, hmm. ju they didn't just tune cars? Oh, crap. And the F50 is Lucky Girl's uh, favorite car ever.
Wow, Joel, you took off on this one. Yeah. Early. <laughs> I'd be sort of kind of fast. <clears throat> A little bit. Oh, um, oh. so you remember when I shared that photo of a blue Ford Focus with a Sonic the Hedgehog sticker in the back and the license plate gotta go fast? Yeah, the one that, like, you saw, like, around here? Or no? Sure. What, is it, is it the one that you saw, like, around our area? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it again, like, <laughs> two weeks ago. Oh, man, Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm not gonna lie, maybe I'll do it this weekend. I've been interested to watch that movie. I'm sure it won't be good, but I've, uh, something tells me it's not awful. Yeah, I've, I've heard- Seems like a fun watch. Yeah, I've heard that like it's nothing special at all, but it's, yeah, it's not, like it's- It's not offensive it's to the senses. It's, right, it's a watchable movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just wanna see Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey. But in real life, man, oh, man, that yeah. guy must have done so many drugs in his day because he seems rattled. He, <laughs> like, he is a interesting person. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really, I really, truly think it's just that's what happens when you do, like, way too many insanely high doses of LSD. That's, <laughs> I think that's the, that's the product of, like, you just think... Like, your ego becomes so dissolved that you're like, we're all one, man. <laughs> you just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I get it, but relax. Well, like, people still live in reality. <laughs> yeah. Well, have you, have you heard about um, the, what happened between him and Tommy Lee Jones on... Uh, whichever Batman movie it was that they were in. Yeah, didn't, like... Tommy Lee Jones, like, really hated him, right? <laughs> yeah. That, like... He didn't want to, like... He didn't want to spend any time with him, like, outside of... Like, outside of anything that they had to do for work. And I think there was... I think reportedly, at one point... Um, like, when they had to, like, shake hands or something, he said... I he said something along the lines of, like... I cannot tolerate your buffoonery. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Which, yeah, I mean, whew. like, I've seen a few interviews with Jim Carrey, and if that truly really is how he is, even, like, a quarter of the time, my God, that would be exhausting to be around. Yeah. <laughs> also, you crushed it, but I'm not upset about second place. Thank you. Congrats on the second place. Thank you. What? Do you, what is uh, what is your vehicle's like uh, performance level? Uh, not even three hundred. I think it's like two sixty eight. What is yours? So I'm noticing that I tend to lose you like almost immediately. Like if you start talking immediately after I do, and I don't, and I'm, I don't know if that's a connection or not. Hmm. Well, that's kind of weird. There you are. Yeah, I I don't yeah. know. Well, so what was your car's performance level? Uh, it's I think it's like two. Hold on, two sixty eight, two sixty eight. Okay, next race I'll change to a slower car so that we're at a closer race. All right, all right. I appreciate you. Don't have to my do S2000 that, but is, I appreciate it. My S two thousand is at like three sixty nine. <laughs> um. Lucky Girl says, realistically, I'll probably never own a Ferrari F50, though, sadly. Uh, there are only 349 ever produced. I mean, don't uh, don't let your dreams be dreams. Maybe one day. You never know. And, oh, and they Alex... Could be nightmares. <laughs> that is true. Uh, <laughs> Alex says, regarding the Sonic movie, it's cringy, but it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I... Honestly, I mean, that's... Sounds about right. <laughs> But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, and I, also, I'm, I am a Ben Schwartz fan. I Uh-oh. Why did you crash into a rock? Uh, I'm literally <laughs> stuck. All right, here we go. It respawned me. Oh, I was going to say, like, I'll come over and ram you. <laughs> 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 free. 
Um, so I'm, I'm a big Ben Schwartz fan, but I do wish, and a lot of people don't know this, here's some fun Sonic the Hedgehog trivia, that the original voice for Sonic in the, well, I don't know about original, but the one that most people know from the Sonic cartoons, uh, he was actually voiced by, oh, I just hit that cop. <laughs> um, it was voiced by Jaleel White. Which, if you are unaware, that is actually Steve Urkel. <laughs> um, oh, and he, like, why do I know that name? Yeah, that, <laughs> that is like the voice for Sonic the Hedgehog that like most people know. And I, I didn't know that until very recently. Um, and I think he does, a, when I think Sonic's voice, I do think of, uh, of Jaleel White. Did I knew that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the way... Um, I don't. If you listen to uh, Sonic's voice in the cartoon, I was reading this interview with with Jaleel White, and he was saying that like he intentionally wanted to make the voice like extremely ambiguous, um, and, and just kind of like, uh, uh, how did he how did he describe it? Not root, like just like rat. This like just like radical little creature. That's just, like, <laughs> extremely, uh, just, like, not, like, where you couldn't really place the accent. And I, listening back to it with that context, I think he really succeeded in that. Um, because it is kind of, what? I thought I went away. Dude, you lost him for a bit. Oh, my God. All right, bribe. Get out of here. Uh. I was having you wow, I was about to say something extremely quality. inflammatory, <laughs> but I will not. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's, uh, I, I, I can, I can guess. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, I'm turning around. That was, man, yeah, do you ever feel, <laughs> do you ever have, just like something is like three quarters of the way out of your brain and right onto your tongue, and you're just like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go, yeah. hold that back. Um, all right, here we go. I'm headed to a race now. Uh, uh, let's see. A uh, lucky girl says, if I'm famous or something, though, like I want to be, then Ferrari might make an F50 or F50 GT just for me. It, there you go. Exactly. Um, although, actually, I hate to say it, but unfortunately, chances are high that Ferrari would not do that because Ferrari kind of sucks with, like, uh special editions of their really expensive cars hence uh dead mouse's perari which uh they did not like at all um <laughs> and and literally like sued him to change and i think they were successful which is it seems insane um mm. but also if you ever want to be considered for an ultra rare special edition ferrari you have to be in good with the company like you have to have owned loads and loads of other Ferraris and bought yeah. lots of them and like you've got to you've got to be one of Ferrari's favorite clientele. Yeah, they really they really um want you to be like a true brand ambassadors for sure. Yeah. Which a lot of the brands do. I mean Ford did a similar thing for Ford GT and I'm sure all the other companies do similar things for their top 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 tier uh hypercars, but it is kind of a bummer. I mean like if you buy the car, it's but like that dead mouse thing still annoys me to this day he bought the car he just wrapped it in like nyan cat wrap and they like were furious it's like why don't you have yep. some fun ferrari like who cares that's not it's not how ferrari do yeah i guess not um alex says i'm gonna have to go in like five to ten minutes or so all good alex in fact we uh we're only gonna oh, be hey, streaming hard, for yeah. hey yeah there we go Oh yeah, we're about to get smoked hard. Um, yep. Oh wow, and I I did not realize that when you start a race, you don't automatically oh. uh, undamage your car. Oh! No. oh ho, ho. Crap! I missed the checkpoint too. Oh boy, this is this is a rough one. This is an extremely rough one. Boy, that was a cluster back there. I think yeah. Alex may have missed it too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody I think we missed all it. To cut that corner. And didn't didn't pay off. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
Celica GT says, wait, what? Ferrari? Yeah, so the, so what this is, if, <laughs> if you don't know, is... Uh, I'm not sure what kind of Ferrari, but the, the uh, electronic DJ slash EDM yeah, I, artist... I believe it was a Ferrari 458. Okay, so there you go. A Ferrari 458. Um, he... All he did was he just got it wrapped in this <laughs> nyan cat wrap, and it was also known as also known as pop tart cat. <laughs> oh, that, well, I by actually some, didn't even know by, that. By, by some people. There you go. Uh, or AKA pop tart cat. Um, I mean, like that, like nyan cat is the like official name, but like if you didn't know that, you might have just called it pop tart cat because you know it's. Pop-Tart cat. Yeah, there but you go. Anyway. And, and if you didn't know that, if you Googled it, you would recognize it instantly. Everybody has seen this goofy-looking thing. Um, not the car, but, like, the, the cat. But, um, but yeah, so he wrapped it, and I'm, I'm quite sure... I could be wrong on the details here, but the gist of it is, like, I'm quite sure Ferrari somehow, like, forced him to not do that. They, they, and I believe it was by way of a lawsuit. Um... Yeah, I forget exactly. I think it was a lawsuit that kind of thing. I don't know if Ferrari actually won or not, but either way, well, in the end of it all, he did end up selling the Ferrari and he bought a Lamborghini and wrapped it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, that's the happy ending, I guess. But yeah, which also is a, uh, but that's just like crazy to like. And if they did win, that has terrifying implications for like, what is ownership? <laughs> like how I man and it's like there's enough like what? tech weirdness like, with like uh, ownership of like your phones and like the software on your phone or whatever I feel like if you buy something you should own it you should be able to do whatever you want in the entire world with it like who mm -hmm. I don't know but that really annoys me about it's Ferrari it's like part of the paperwork for buying a Ferrari is an end user license it's an end user license agreement yeah yeah like that's crazy that's crazy But I I support I support Dead Mouse's crusade against automobile companies who don't like Nyan Cat raps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more lap. I thought that was the last one. Okay, so we're about to have a, a one, two, three finish by a wide margin here, so <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah, I, I mean, for having a car that is not a maxed out 400 level car, I, I'll, I'll be satisfied if I can keep the gap to about under a thousand yards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh. I'm not sure that I actually managed to pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we went into, into this knowing that Alex was going to get the win. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Will this heal me? <gasps> it did! Why didn't I do that on the first lap? I'm the dumbest person in the world. <laughs> so, that came across my microphone like really garbled and it was like twice as funny. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm so dumb. I, I didn't know that you could... Uh, Repair your car mid race. <laughs> I just went off the track a little bit. And it worked out. Alex has a very fancy looking F40. Oh, are you still um, you're still racing, aren't you? No, no, no. I I <laughs> just finished. I just finished. Oh. Um, <laughs> Lucky girl says. Alex and I are parked out in front of the race <laughs> yeah just finished uh lucky girl says oof so i'll have to be a big ferrari collector with a lot of money first uh br broop <laughs> what's up broop I, I don't know why but i love that name uh welcome welcome um lucky girl says yeah that's one thing that annoys me about ferrari they're way too picky with customization um oh shadow's claw what's up shadows we have a shadow light in the chat uh pretty frequently but um I don't know if uh, we've seen Shadow's Claw around, so welcome, welcome. Um, Celica GT says, wow, that's no fun. Dead Mouse is, like, happy-go-lucky. <laughs> um, let's see here. 
Uh, yeah, I like the F I like the LM body kit on Alex's F40. Yeah, that thing looks sweet. Uh, Alex says, want to wanna pull out my actual car? Yeah, do it, Alex. Do it. Especially if you only got, like, probably, like, one more race in you if you had to go soon. Um... All right, let's see here. We'll pick a uh, another race. Uh, let's go. Hmm. Okay. I am. This is all the way on the other side of the map. So, can you, oh yeah, you can fast travel to garages in this game. Um, I'm going to fast travel over there if there's one close by, and there is. So is this over by the... Bayview Park first area. Garage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I don't actually have to drive there with you, because I'll get the invite. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, feel, yeah. This is, uh... it, it gives me something to do. <laughs> True. I think Alex is starting a race. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. I accepted. I'm, I'm into All it. Right. I did not know anybody in the party could start a race. That's good to know. Yeah, I thought it was just the party leader, but yeah, that's handy. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be rough for, uh, for me, I have a feeling. Lucky Girl says, NFS Heat was a massive improvement on NFS Payback. Payback kind of sucked. Yeah, I haven't heard really a ton either way about Need for Speed Payback in my days. Ah, yeah, and then Alex says, Payback was full of uh, RNG pay-to-win garbage. Yeah, and it's a real shame because besides that, I actually really, really like Payback. I, thought the, I actually thought the driving mechanics were a little bit tighter. <laughs> Yeah, the w m still to this day, my biggest complaint with this game is this goofy drifting system. Um, other than that, and it's not the biggest complaint in the world, but it's enough to where it annoys me every time I play. <laughs> I just wish it was a little bit tighter. And not yeah. not tighter in the literal sense, but like tighter in the figurative sense. Like I wish they tightened up the uh, uh, whatever they did before they before launch but that's okay new developer for the next need for speed uh i'll be very interested to see how that one is mm. Good stuff. Still one through three here. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I almost screwed myself. Oh, <laughs> my God. Took my hand off the controller for half a second to itch my nose. Almost went straight <laughs> into a wall. Oh, it's still itchy. Oh. Yeah, the one thing that I do hope for the next one is that they keep the level of customization and stuff from these uh, Ghost Games developed games. Yeah, did they... Uh, I'm not, like... I played one Need for Speed way back in the day, and then I didn't play another one, and then I played this one. So I'm unfamiliar with, like, the vast majority of them. But was customization, like, not a big part of the other ones? Well, so, I mean, Need for Speed has been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it has. It's a lot. But starting with Need for Speed Underground and 
Um, from there, basically through probably Need for Speed Carbon and I guess Pro Street, um, customization was a big deal because that was the whole time where, I mean, everybody was into Fast and Furious, like sport compact tuner cars. And yeah, oh yeah. Um, but things kind of took a bit of a break uh, when Need for Speed started doing more things like their old Hot Pursuit games that were more like supercars and like um, backcountry roads and things and also running from police. And especially the Criterion developed games like Rivals and the most one reboot has very, very little car customization. Now they were lots of fun to play, but like I really, really miss being able to do all kinds of cool customizing stuff to yeah. your cars. Yeah, that's got to be a tricky line to walk as a game developer. I would assume mm -hmm. it's like you want to be, you want it to be as accessible as possible. Well, I mean, not for every game, but I would assume for games like this, you'd want it to be as accessible as possible. But yeah, you would want to have uh, also as much customization as possible too. I, I would guess. Mm -hmm. And. Fortunately, uh, oh, sorry, Joel. I don't mean to interrupt you, but Alex, uh, Alex, peacing out. So uh, thanks for hanging out, Alex. As as usual, yeah, it, was, it was fun. Yeah, um, thanks for playing and thanks for hanging out. Uh, also, Celica GT. Yes, Criterion is getting it back. And Lucky Girl says they need to bring the next one to California. And yeah, I would not be mad about that. Well, the thing is, is the these last three Need for Speed games, uh, Need for Speed 2016, Need for Speed Payback, and Need for Speed Heat, have had just fantastic customization. And it is truly not rivaled by any other racing game at the moment. Uh, because for some reason, like, street racing, car customizing games have, like, not been a thing. For reasons that I can't figure out yeah so when you say oh yeah okay i guess yeah it's been a while i this whole time i was thinking you were talking about performance upgrades but i but you're i don't think you are are you you're talking about like visual customization more, yeah more visual yeah stuff. yeah I mean, okay like... i kind of forgot how robust that was but you're right it's there are like a million little things you can change in this game I just kind of yeah, forgot. The, the mirrors, the hood, yeah. the bumpers, side skirts, trunks, tail lights, headlights. Yeah, wow. Like, it, like every little bit, like you can tweak. And something that I've really appreciated about this game in particular is that with the engine swaps, like, and actually even just the regular cars themselves, the engine noises are super, super accurate. Man, that's awesome. What I what I also like, particularly with engine sounds in most games nowadays, is I love the difference between how it sounds when you're in third person view versus how it sounds when you're in first person view, and they make that change of like when you're in the cabin, like you heat, like it sounds like you are. I'm just, it's such yeah. a small detail, but I, I I really like when games do that. Yeah. Yeah, and so like, like I, I'm a, I'm a little bit sad that Ghost Games is not getting Need for Speed anymore because I can tell that there is a lot of like real car love in these games, even if there are lots of kind of rough edges on the gameplay side. Yeah, yeah. Do you? So what's your what is your favorite Need for Speed game? I'm probably. Split between Underground One and Underground Two. Um, I think. Whoa. The racing, fun and exciting in Underground One, it it just plays a lot faster and smoother and more arcadey. Um, but Underground Two, it's such a big game. There's so much to do in it, and you and that was the first time that they did a. Uh, open world free roam city to drive through. Um, oh wow, yeah. So that one's got to have an insane amount of nostalgia too. Yeah, and like there's there was so much you could do to your car, and so many things to like explore and discover in the city. It was, it was really a lot of fun. And actually, I remember I got it for 
Christmas one year, and uh, when I start, I started playing it, and like, I felt like I had only been playing for like, I don't know, maybe an hour or two, and I come out and realize that like I'd been playing for like four hours straight, and I didn't realize. It. Like, <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> That's the best. Well, sometimes it feels like the worst in the moment, but those, those are right. always like the best, the most fun. Because you're kind of like, well, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I wasn't paying attention, and you beat me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lucky Girl says, I love how NFS Heat is called NFS Heat, and it's based in Miami. Only basketball fan. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's the Miami Heat. Uh, I, yeah. I never made that connection. Um, Celica GT says underground series was fantastic. I agree. I think unless I'm really misremembering and I could be, but I believe the, the need for speed game that I played back in the day was underground too. I feel like that was the one that like everybody had. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people did. Yeah. Uh, and then lucky girl says the engine sounds are amazing. Corvette Z06 and the LaFerrari have amazing engine sound. Yeah. I, yeah. I bet the, uh, the Ferrari does for sure. Um, and then Need for Speed Underground 2 it's some of the best customization ever Neon Car Sound si oh Car Sound System customization <laughs> what that's yeah. that's that's wild uh, Trunk Neon yeah, Engine it. Neon Hydraulics uh -huh. just everything wow spinners <laughs> dang yeah no that sounds extremely up my alley uh and I am, I am all about the neon. I know, like, I get that it's tacky, but I just love, like, n like neon and really just, like, any kind of, like, different colored lights. I don't know what it is. I don't get it. <laughs> but, like, all of my lights in my house are the, um, are Philips Hue bulbs that you can change to whatever color uh, from your phone. And I do change them frequently. Uh, I don't know. I just love it. I love that stuff. I've got several light yeah. bars, uh, LED light, uh, or strips, I guess, not bars. I, same type of thing, but uh, those are, like, scattered throughout my house. I'm just such a big fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Celica GT. Yeah, nailed it. So, like you said the other day, blacked out, yeah, but with remember. neon. Yep, 100%. That is, uh, that is my ish, as the kids say. I remember one of the other big attractions with Need for Speed Underground 2 was that they they added SUVs. Oh uh, man! <laughs> I can I can imagine that being a huge deal back in the day. Like they <laughs> there were there were only three: it was the Lincoln Navigator, the Cadillac Escalade, and the Hummer H2. Wow! What more do you need? <laughs> and they were and they were awful to drive. They were so <laughs> oh, slow. I'm sure they probably made them extra bulky to differentiate them. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, it was it was painful to drive them. <laughs> Dave B says, "Is it bad I turned off RGB on my HP Omen PC?" I mean, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what that means, so I... <laughs> well, apparently he's not a real gamer because real gamers have RGB. <laughs> RGB is red, red, green, blue for uh, LED lighting. So basically, as long as you've got those three, you can basically have any color. But, uh, so, so... How... What is that? So every color is a blend of those three no yeah 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 led colors yeah, yeah and i'm aware of rgb but what is it what do you turn it off on your pc well i'm assuming that he like either just turned off the lighting or just set it to one color and doesn't mess with it oh you mean you mean like your casing i'm like how would you well, ever be able to play i thought you meant like on the monitor like you need all no, those no no yeah, I was like, you need a red, green, and blue. That's every color. <laughs> no, this is this is the accent lighting, like on. The I understand. I understand. I I was way confused. Yeah, because I got RGB, but I was like, what do you mean turned it? Like, how would you be able to use your computer? I understand now. Uh, oh, but <laughs> yeah, yes, it's bad. You should be ashamed. Just kidding. 
<laughs> You're only a real gamer if everything on your computer. <laughs> yeah, if it, everything's colors, glowing. It's constantly oscillating. Yeah, if it's constantly oscillating. Uh. You're, you're, you're not a real gamer if you don't constantly have a, a bag of Doritos within arm's reach at any moment in time. That's very important. A giant case of, a giant case of Mountain Dew game fuel. Yes, exactly. The game <laughs> fuel. Oh, no. Or I Code Red. The, I clobbered the concrete on the bridge. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, no. I love that. Oh, no. Giving me an opportunity here. Oh man, I am out of repairs and I'm serious. My car is seriously damaged. Oh no. Okay, so yeah, if you hit up a uh, hit up a gas station if there's one like right off the route here, it it will work. I mean, confirmed. Yeah, but I don't I don't think there is one just right off the route. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> oh. Looks like this is a pretty long track. Oh wow, yeah, only 30%. Uh, Dave B also says, I need an in-game uh, Jeep Comanche. It's pronounced Comanche, right? I don't know if I ever said that word out loud before. Yeah, yeah. Um, With Hellcat power. Yeah, you What's do. You Everybody does. Um, I don't know, what game are you playing, Dave? Then Lucky Girl says, oh my god, yes, you could have like 8 to 16 different subwoofers and stuff and SUVs. It was amazing. <laughs> yep. That yeah, is yeah, so you ridiculous. Buy, you buy subwoofers and uh, video screens and nitrous tanks and... Um, uh, <sighs> oh, no, I hit again. You hit me? <laughs> One more hit and I'm done. Oh, man. Okay. Well, because you hit the concrete also, and then I proceeded to hit it while you were there. <laughs> is that what happened? I feel like you pushed um, me into it. I think this is shady. No. <laughs> uh, why? There was one other audio component that I'm not remembering. What? If? What is it called? Amplifier. That's it. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember the word amplifier. <laughs> so how did all of this? affect the game like that <laughs> like or did it well, really so, maybe it didn't so I, I was about to say like it doesn't actually do anything but actually it does it did have um some uh aspects because one of the things that you had to do in the game in order to fulfill sponsor contracts uh was oh. to build a car with a certain amount of customization level uh, so that it would be featured on magazine covers and DVD covers. Oh, yeah, Pim and, Pimp My Ride style. Right, so all the visual parts would uh, contribute to that overall score. Um, so that was enough, so that was something that you could do to up that score. Interesting. Yeah, we need a game like that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for so many reasons, I hope this pandemic is over sooner than later but yeah we i i really like to do like old games on the stream at some point like when we can actually yeah do for office. sure because <laughs> i own a lot of these old racing games and so i could just bring in my system and things and we can hook it all up yeah yeah we will we will see it is uh it is you know, <laughs> looking as when, sketchy when as ever right now <laughs> Man. Stole the win. <laughs> um, Dave says, uh, <laughs> come on, Cheetos are nothing. Yeah, Cheetos are very good. I'm a fan of the, uh, <laughs> of the, uh, like the crunchy Cheetos. I don't really like the puffs that much, but the crunchy Cheetos, mmm. Really yeah, good. I'm with you on that. I, I prefer the... I prefer the crunchy Cheetos. Whoa, whoa. Also, <laughs> I just knocked over my uh, my mic here. Also, um, the jalapeno cheater, cheaters, the jalapeno <laughs> Cheetos are much better than the flaming hot Cheetos. And I know that's a controversial opinion, but it's the correct one. Uh, I I take it that it has some like actual jalapeno flavor to it that you probably like. 
No, not even really. I don't like hot things, so... Ah, yeah, so... Well, then, probably... You might actually... Well, I don't know. I haven't had uh, flaming Hot Cheetos in, like, a while, but... I remember thinking that, like, the Jalapeno Cheetos were maybe a little hotter. They just have more flavor. I just I just like the flavor better. Um, the the flaming Hot s tastes, like, too artificial or something. I don't know. I can see that. Because, I mean, I, I actually... If they weren't so hot, I actually do like the flavor of jalapeno. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Jalapenos have a good flavor. But, but yeah, they I, are hot. I have to take I have to take them in moderation. Yeah. No, I get I get thirsty. it. <laughs> I get it for sure. Um oh Dave said uh I think a really early need for speed have a had a Comanche. Um and Celica that, that might be. Celica GT said an underground three that returns to its roots roots would be nice. Yeah, I I mean I'm sure every game that we've ever loved will probably have a spiritual successor at some point before we die. Um, I mean, really, Need for Speed 2016 was pretty much the uh, was I think the spiritual successor to Underground. Really? Yeah. Well, that is very like, interesting. It was all like. It was all like sport compact customizing. It had drifting. Um, it actually did not have cops, which was actually something that a lot of people complained about with Need for Speed Underground and Underground 2. Interesting. Oh, huh. Maybe I'll have to give that one a try. Um, Lucky Girl says. Oh, by the way, that was our. I maybe should have said this, but that was our last race. We <laughs> we uh we generally only do this from two to four, but I just want to catch up. Um, on the chat here, Lucky Girl says, uh, plus you could open up your trunk and stuff in some magazine cover photo shoots, so you could actually show off some of the extra stuff inside. Mm. Yeah, that is very cool. Um, but anyway, so that is gonna do it for the stream today. Uh, as I said, we stream every Tuesday and Thursday from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, we don't always do this game, but we always do racing and driving games. So, uh, now, Joel, I haven't yet, but are we allowed to say the name of the game that we're going to be playing on Tuesday, at the very least? Or is even that, is it embargo that we know anything about it at all? Oh, I think, I mean, everybody knows it's coming out. Yeah, so okay. I think we can say. Okay, so, so yeah, so we'll, we'll be, um, we'll be streaming, uh, F1 2020 on Tuesday so that should be very exciting and then Thursday it's gonna be a uh, next Thursday it's gonna be a shorter one because um, as as long time uh, autoblog stream viewers know once a month autoblog has a, a big team-wide meeting at 2 so uh, that's next Thursday but on days like that uh, those are Rocket League days so also it's Rocket League's five-year anniversary um, so they got some, uh, I don't know, qu exciting, I guess, stuff. I think it's, I don't know. I have some beef with psionics right now, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so we'll be doing that Thursday. We do an F1, F1 2020 on Tuesday. Um, so that is next week. But until then, uh, check out autoblog.com. Uh, if you're not aware of autoblog.com, it's a website we have all the latest and greatest automotive news and reviews. We also have all kinds of car shopping tools on the site. Uh, if you're looking to buy a car uh, that could potentially help you out, we also have tools that help you find the cheapest gas prices near you, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so definitely check out autoblog.com for anything automotive related. There's a very good chance you'll be able to find it there. Um, we're also all over social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, we're all over the place there. Um, if you've been watching the stream, if you've been enjoying it, uh, please consider dropping us a follow if you're watching on Twitch or subscribing if you're watching on YouTube. Um, it's 100% it's free for you to do. It helps us out a ton. Um, we really, really appreciate that. Uh, thanks for... Jeez, I'm, I'm like developing the hiccups here. Um, <laughs> thanks, uh, everyone, for watching. Uh, Joel, big thank you for joining today on your on your day off. It's much appreciated. It was a it was a good time as always, for sure. Yeah, it was fun. Um, let's see here. 
Uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> so look at GT says see and drop shot Rocket League. <laughs> yeah, well for sure. Um Oh Dave says very cool on the F1. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh Hey, Gaming Sam is here. We're just we're just wrapping it up, Gaming Sam. We're just wrapping it up. We stream Tuesdays and Thursdays from two o'clock to four o'clock. We stream racing and driving games on this channel. Um so uh, you just missed it, unfortunately, but we will be back Tuesday with F1 2020. Um, so that's very exciting. And then I think... Oh, so we do have merch as well at redbubble.com slash people slash autoblog. So you can check that out if you want. We have t-shirts, coffee mugs, throw pillows, stuff like that. But we also... I've also been shouting out... Um, there's a lot of like cr like crazy stuff going on in, in the world. A lot of causes... Um, that could use some help, particularly some financial help right now. So if you have a charity that you uh, really like, that you feel really strongly about, um, I've been encouraging people to c consider donating to that charity. If you're not sure where to start, we actually have a list of charities uh, that we like in the Twitch bio, the Autoblog Twitch bio, so you can check those out. Um, yeah, obviously stuff's really crazy right now. Um, obviously, a lot of people don't they just have extra money they can throw around. Um, but if you can, uh, just just consider it. Uh, just trying to make the world a better place. The world's uh, pretty insane right now. So if, if we can make the world even slightly better, uh, that's cool, in my opinion. Um, so anyways, uh, I think that's it. And we will be back next Tuesday at two o'clock so we'll see you then adios